Hey everyone, today I'll be talking about our subsampling station. This is where it's located in the lab currently. And I'll just start by saying that you should you should always clean up your station when you're done. So whoever used this last uh, didn't do the best job cleaning up. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by showing how you should, should leave the station when you're done. So these are uh, two pieces of cleaning equipment that we keep in this heat scanning room. So what I'll do is just get underneath the equipment to remove some of the seeds, try to corral stuff together, and then I'll take, sorry for the audio here, I'll probably put some over this, but... So you always want to leave your workspace clean, and I like to start with a clean workspace. So I know exactly which seeds I've missed potentially, and just as a good indicator of how cleanly I'm working. If I'm dropping a lot of seeds and things like that, that's going to be an issue that uh, can impact the subsample weight also have downstream effects on the scanning. So we just want to avoid that as much as possible. This computer should be on. If it's not already on, you can turn it on here. Uh, so we'll need to have the computer up and running. Uh, we need to have our scale up and running. And you can see while I was cleaning, I was really careful not to touch it. I did but bunch it, excuse me, I did, I was careful not to touch it, but I did bump it once. We want to avoid that. This is an extremely sensitive instrument and we don't want to disturb it too much. Always check that you're within level when starting. You just turn it on simply using this. Another important piece of equipment to have is this USB interface. It should usually be plugged into the computer. Something else we need is a barcode scanner and I like the hands-free one. Looks like somebody else has been using it so I'll just go and grab that. Plug it into this open USB port here. It's just the way life is sometimes. You do it right the first time and do it a different way and it turns out you're doing it right the first time. So this guy is alive now. He's got two settings. So this is the incorrect color that you want to see and this is the correct color. It's going to talk to you so you know when you're scanning things and uh, just keeps you company while you're working here. So now we need to be able to have the balance talk to the computer. And what we're going to do is use a piece of software to do that. But what I want to have you do first is if you already have a workbook that you know you're going to be working in, if your project manager sent it to you, you need to open that up. Otherwise, uh, you can create a workbook. And the workbook features that are really key is we need in the first column to have something to read our QR codes into. The camera up here for you. And then we're gonna have the subsample weight right here. So pretty basic, we're collecting two really important pieces of information. QR code from the packet, weight of the subsample. Okay, now that I've got this set up, I'm just gonna go ahead and save it real quick. Uh, we're gonna have the you guys save to the lab OneDrive, which will be mapped onto this computer, but for uh, this video, I'm just gonna be doing things uh, on the desktop. So I'm gonna show you subsampling for a greenhouse project that I am working on currently. So it's gonna be uh, named like this. Okay, now we got that set up. Make sure it's saved, close it. Go in and open up SPDC data collection. We're working in Excel. 
I'm gonna go find the workbook I'm gonna be working in. You need to do this every time you start up this station. So uh, get used to this workflow because it's something you'll have to do each time. So now this needs to stay open. It usually will just fade away to the background, but it'll be logging all the weights that you take. So it, there is some redundancy if, if needed. Okay, so we can start working now. We've got ourselves set up. Uh, I've got a place where I'm gonna be putting the subsamples. We've got a lot of these throughout the lab. There's another one right here. Some of the tools that are helpful here is uh, scoops. So I like to break up the subsampling into two steps. First, I'll subsample out of a packet like this into a labeled envelope with a new QR code for the sample. So this QR code on the actual sample packet should match the new QR code on your envelope. It's just a way that we can make sure that we're correctly transferring samples, keeping everything in order. Uh, as you can see, these are all already in order. Your QR label should be in order when you put them on your packet. So if you stay organized, you can simply pick your packet up, subsample out of there, uh, which just consists of taking this scoop, level, leveled off, into the new envelope, uh, shutting that, and either using a, a paper clip, which I prefer, because you can take them off, put them back on, or a staple, which you have to bite it out with this guy. So I like to use the um, uh, envelopes with the paper clips. So I've already done that for this project, and actually this project is just single plants. So we don't have a, a plot size bag like this that has quite a bit of seed. We just had single plants and those plants didn't always yield enough to give us what we typically use for the subsample here, which is a two mil tube. Uh, there should be some up here, but if you need more, they're just down here. You always wanna be using the same subsample. So if you're working with barley or another crop, you might use some of these bigger ones, camelina, uh, I don't know, teff for this maybe. So I've already done that. So I've got everything laid out here, and this is the workflow that I like to recommend. Just working uh, right to left here. So what I'll do is make sure my cursor's here. We're gonna take this, scan it in. It'll, it should automatically go to the next cell. If it doesn't, talk to your project manager. We can change the settings on this so that it'll do that for you. It also talked to me. It said, hey, I got you. I got that scan. Next, we want to make sure we're teared out here. I already put the wayboat in, but if you don't have a wayboat, get a wayboat, put it in there, tear it out. And I just want to show you how sensitive this is. So I'm pressing on this counter in different places and the balance is actually jumping around. So this is incredibly sensitive and that's why we have this top on it because you could breathe on this and it was going to change the weight. So. Don't get in the habit of leaning on this counter if you're if you're feeling fatigued or anything like that because it's going to affect the weight and we want to avoid that. So I've already scanned this in. I'm just going to open this up and put the seed on. And you want to be extremely careful when you do that because if any of the seed jumps off the balance, that's going to be an issue both for the cleanliness of your station here, uh, but also for uh, just losing seed. We want to try and avoid that. So I've got all the seed from the packet in the way boat now and I'm just waiting for this to bounce uh, this bounce to stabilize and it's stabilized now so I'll hit print and you can see we've got the subsample weight here and I just like to confirm that it came in and then I use the arrow key to set me up for my next sample. So now this part is extremely important. You want every single seed in this wayboat to go into this envelope. And eventually we want every single seed in this envelope to go onto the scanner. And I'll talk later about why that's really important, but that is something that we need to be extremely careful about. So when I pick this up, I'm gonna be taking my time here 
and making sure that every seed goes in here and you can see there's actually one that's trying to hang out so make sure that you get every seed in there okay I grabbed a new paper clip but I had an extra paper clip already because I took it off but anyway, you want to have it secured like that. I like to organize from the back to the front in these bins because if you start sacking up a lot of envelopes in the front, inevitably they're going to get they're going to get overcome by gravity and they're going to start sliding against the cardboard here. So I like to just get them set up in the back. Between samples, I like to keep this closed just to keep any seed from falling on there, anything like that. I hesitated because I didn't remember if I had the cell set up. So uh, if you do scan into the wrong cell, you know, you can just keep scanning, keep scanning, keep scanning. Uh, you can just use control X to cut it and put it over in the cell. And it looks like it's occupying this whole thing, but it's actually just the first, the first cell. So now, show you again, we're going to scan this in, cursor's in the right place, come over here, that C is going to try and jump around and flip out of there, do your best to get it in the way boat entirely, wait for the balance to stabilize, print, come over here, okay, Got a question mark here, and that's because the balance was in the process of stabilizing. I thought it was stabilized. Uh, the balance is telling me, you know, I'm not sure about that. So that's something you want to keep your, your eye out for. So I'm just going to reprint this because I thought it was at aught 618, but it wasn't. It was confused at the moment. So now. This is going in here. These are sticking a little bit. And already I can see that I probably missed one seed when I put it in there. So I'm gonna get that out of the way now. But that's something we wanna avoid. So it's okay when you're going in to the wayboat if you miss one, it's not the end of the world. But coming out of the way boat into the packet is when you really want to try your best to get it in there. And as you can see, I didn't take that seed and put it in this packet because I am fairly certain it came from this sample, but we can't be 100% sure. So if you drop a sample, you're not going to go pick that sample up and put it back in here. You're going to have to re-subsample. So you have to go find the original bag and pull that subsample into a clean packet that doesn't have any remnant seed in it because we don't know where that seed is coming from with 100% certainty. So that's something you want to avoid. Okay, so I showed you how to do a couple now. You're just gonna cruise on this. You're gonna set up yourself with a workflow. This is what I like. If you find something that works better for you, you know, if you like to have them over here, scanning like that, that's fine. Just make sure that you are being consistent and finding something that works for you. Periodically you need to be saving either with control S or using the icon at the top here. We should be saving to OneDrive so we have backup on the cloud. Your project manager might prefer that you save it in your downloads, email it to them, put it on the thumb drive. It's good to have redundancy in your data backups. Your project manager will dictate how you should be backing up and saving your data, but at the end of the day here, you're just gonna hit save and close this out. And you can see your log for, for everything. So uh, you should have the same number of samples so we can close this. And then I just turn off the monitor here, turn off this guy, come over, unplug our friend so that it doesn't keep blinking, waiting to talk to you. That's a subsampling.